This is a follow up to my cloud memory MCP server video. In this one, I'm going to show you how to set it up so that memory sync between Macs that are using the MCP server on cloud desktop via Dropbox. If you want to use a different cloud provider, the setup will be relatively similar. So this is going to be a bit more of an advanced tutorial. You're going to need to be comfortable with terminal and also troubleshooting on your own. Now, if you haven't set up the memory MCP server with Mac, you should do that first. I will not be covering that again. So check out my previous video on that. The link should be on the screen somewhere. After my last MCP video, I got a few messages and comments asking me how to set this up so that the memory syncs between multiple computers. And I assumed that changing the memory path in the cloud desktop config file would be all you had to do. I didn't try it. But when I tried setting that up myself, I realized that that's not the case. Let me tell you what I discovered. So in my last video, I suggested adding these two extra lines of code, memory persists true and memory path, because I found that adding them made sure that the memory does persist between sessions, which didn't work for me with the original setup. So I added these two lines. This is the line that I think made the difference, memory persists true, but I added this one memory path just in case. And the memory path tells the config file to save the memory.json relative to this NBX server. Now I realized after digging into it, the same relative path is actually hard coded into the source code of the MCP server. And for whatever reason, in my case, it didn't work until I told it explicitly to save it there. So I assumed that just changing this to my Dropbox path would do the job. But when I realized that when I changed the memory path to Dropbox, it would still save the memories in the relative MPX directory. So I realized that the memory path we added to the config file didn't really matter. It was redundant since it was hard coded in the source code of the MCP server. So I realized we had to take a different route. The way this is going to work is that we're going to create a symbolic link between the hard coded memory.json file in the relative MPX directory and a copy of that in a new directory in Dropbox. And what that essentially will do is push changes both ways between the hard coded version that cloud will look at and save to with a version in our cloud directory. And then what you'll end up doing is doing the same thing on your other computers. Now in my scenario, my first computer, my first memory file, that is going to be my base file. Meaning I'm going to make one original file and then it's going to sync between all of them. And you might want to do this differently if you have important memory saved on both computers, but I suggest putting them both into one memory file first and then doing this process. And then what we're going to end up with is a synced cloud memory between computers. And you can try and do this on any of your clouds. I'm just doing this for Dropbox. So let's just go over prerequisites really quickly. Keep in mind, you're going to be using multiple computers. So you're going to have to have a cloud desktop set up on both computers. You're going to have to have the same config file, or at the very least, this, have the memory MCP server set up on both computers. You're going to have to have a cloud provider like Dropbox with access to the same directory on both computers. And you're going to have to be able to use the terminal to figure out exactly where your MPX directory is saved, because I think it creates a different MPX directory in each computer. Feel free to use Perplexity or ChatGPT with search or even better, Claude with Brave Search to troubleshoot and make sure you're getting everything right. Also, back everything up, use Git, or just copy your files. And one more caveat I should add is what you might have to do in the future is recreate that symbolic link. Okay, so let's get started. And I'm going to give you all the instructions. I'm going to put a link in the description to my website because it's a bit long. So what I want to tell you is I'm setting this up on my single computer and all other computers have no memories. So if you have your memory scattered among several computers, I suggest consolidating them all first and putting them on your first computer. And you could do this several ways, like asking Claude on each computer to tell you what's in the knowledge graph. You just copy and paste it and send it to yourself and put it in your initial Claude desktop. Because the way this works is the first computer is going to set the memories for all the other computers. And once they're all set, you'll be able to save between them all but this is for the initial state. So I'm gonna run through this really fast, but you're gonna have the instructions you can look at. So first thing we're gonna do is open up Claude. Let's just start it up and make sure that memory server is running. So let's say I like pineapples and we want this to save to the memory. So first we see it's reading the memory, writing to the memory, great. And what we wanna do is figure out exactly where this was stored. So every computer may store this a little bit differently. So we're gonna go through the same process each time on every computer. So we're gonna open up terminal. We're gonna run this command. Okay, this is, what we want this is the path so we're going to copy it and you know what i'm going to do we're going to open up the sticky okay you can do this however you want i recommend using just a little sticky i'm going to copy this path we're going to paste it we want to add this at the end and you'll just copy and paste this it doesn't really matter how it looks here this is one line okay so next you're going to go to whatever cloud provider you're using in my case dropbox and create a new directory called cloud cloud memory okay so i created mine and you want to copy the path name so the way i do it is i just right click down here copy as path name i'll take this and say dropbox path cool now we're going to verify the 
npx pass. So first we're going to type in ls, and then we're going to copy this, including what we edited it's there. Now we're going to create a backup of our path. So all we're going to type is type in is cp our path, and we're going to type in again. We're going to add our path again. Type dot backup. And just to verify that, we can go ls. Great. So we see the backup there. Cool. Okay. So the next step is we're going to copy our memory file because this is the one that's working right now to our Dropbox in our new directory. So the way we do that, type in cp our path again, and then we're going to take our Dropbox path, paste it in there. Okay, ran an error. I'm trying again. My bad. Take this whole bad boy. Paste it in, and it copied. Well, let's just double check that. Let's just open up our Dropbox, and now we see the memory.json file in our Dropbox, and it has data. The next step, we're gonna remove the original memory file. So we're gonna go rm and take our memory file. We're putting in our original mpx path because now we have it backed up in Dropbox. Don't worry, we're gonna get it back. So I'm just gonna clear this for readability. All we're gonna do is the fun part. We're gonna create the sim link between the Dropbox version and our mpx directory. And basically the mpx directory is always going to look at the Dropbox version. So we'll be able to sync between computers. Okay, so what we're going to type is ln dash s space. And you know what, let's just do it like this. We're going to copy the path name, type it in here, space, and then we're going to put it on our mpx path. And now let's just go back to our mpx path. And now we'll see the memory.json is back there. Very cool. It's clear. What we want to check is that if we write a memory to Claude, it saves in the Dropbox. Let's first of all, quick Claude, and restart Claude. It's always a good idea to restart Claude when you do these changes. So let's say, hey, it's gonna read the memory. Let's see if it reads it correctly. I remember you enjoy pad thai and pineapples. Let's add one more memory. Let's just add something like, I also like steak too. Okay, so the point is we just wanted to create some memories here. Okay, now the good news is I already set this up on my second computer, so I'm just gonna switch to that. And by the way, my second computer is just my first computer with a different user. And I went through the whole process there and we're gonna test it out right now. Okay, so now we're on my second user on the same computer. And I've already set this up, but let's just check. First of all, my Dropbox has the memory.json file we created a few minutes ago on the other user. Okay, so what's important for me to emphasize now is you should follow the guide to set this up on your second or subsequent computers. And I want to emphasize that the paths may differ than they did from the first computer. So in the guide, I reiterated the steps to figure out your MPX path and your cloud path. For example, my Dropbox folder was found in a different path than it was on the same computer for a different user. So sometimes things get messed up, sometimes things change. So I just want you to go through every step on your subsequent computers again to make sure you have the correct MPX path and your correct cloud or Dropbox path so you don't run into any errors when you're setting this up. So it's a bit redundant, but it goes by pretty, pretty quickly. If you did the first time, you'll be even better doing it the second time. So let's just check that it works. So let's open up Claude. Let's just ask it, what do you remember? Checking the memory. Okay, so it worked. I enjoy several fruits, including pad thai, pineapples, and steak, and I have a goal to travel to Thailand. So we see here that it was able to sync our memories between one computer to the other computer using symbolic links. There may be a better way of doing this, this is how I set it up and I wanted to share because I know other people had this question. I'm assuming or hoping that Claude will add memory natively to all of their apps. I'm assuming that maybe the creators of the MCP memory server will add cloud storage as well. But until now, this is a bit of a hacky way to get it to work. It works for me, it's really cool. Unlike ChatGPT, which has a limit in how many memories you can store, you can store almost unlimited memories here. It really depends on how much storage you have, but you're not limited like ChatGPT, so this is really cool. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching and have a great day.